and then exhale. Exhaling out through your mouth, your nose. Noticing how the air flows out of your nostrils, chest and stomach. In gently. And again, pause at the bottom of the thing. Really noticing any gaps between breaths. In my words, the stillness that I select yourself go more deeply into the stillness of each breath. Breathing in again. How the stomach rises, chest rises. Subtle flow of air in through the nostrils. Pause at the top of the inhale. Well, notice any thoughts and any emotions flowing through your mind. Yeah. Any negativity, any difficulty for whatever reason, doesn't matter. Just notice the thoughts, notice the emotions, notice how this uh, shows up. Any physical sensations. And you're just going to let them go with the help of your breath. As you exhale, exhale, and through your nose, have a sense of just sighing them all away. And you're just dropping thoughts, emotions, any physical sensations, letting them all go. Uh, with the help of your breath. And again, at the bottom of the exhale, finding some peace. And you notice this peace that arises in the gap between breath. And gap between my words. This meeting is being recorded. Noticing how the stomach rises, the chest rises. We 
notice any air flowing in through the nostrils. Pause at the top of the inhale. Smile. And as you exhale, the breath flow naturally out through your nostrils. Notice sensation in your nostrils, the bottom of the nose, and between the nose and the upper lip. Just focusing in on this particular area. It just focuses the mind. Bring your mind completely into the present moment. It's really the uh, intention, the idea behind focusing on your breath. And just let the breath kind of happen to you, through you, and for you. There's no conscious effort, there's no stressing, straining, striving. You just watch the breath, watch the subtle sensations of the breath as they flow into the nostrils, and they flow out of the nostrils. And notice any sensation in your top lip, between your upper lip and your nose. Anything else comes in, just let that go. And focus all your attention on the breath. this little area between the nose and the top lip, subtle sensations happening in your nose, the bottom of the nostrils, the inside of the nostrils. Allowing yourself to get more and more relaxed with each breath. There's really nothing else to do, no else to go, nothing else to think about. Just breathe, watch your breath, watch the subtle sensations of the breath. Just observe. And we have a sense that you're not really doing it. The breath is just happening to you, through you, and for you. And notice how relaxing it is. You should be getting more and more relaxed with each breath. sinking a little bit more deeply into only calm, relaxed state. And each breath. So just watch your breath, watch the subtle sensations of your breath going in through the nostrils, over the area between your upper lip and your nose, and then the process reverses. And the air flows out of the nostrils. Notice any sensations at the bottom of your nose. Notice the air flowing over the area between your nose and your top lip. Just can observe subtle sensations of the breath. For a few minutes of silence. 
I'm not going to speak. Just breathe and observe your breath. If any thoughts come in, mind wants to wander off somewhere thinking about the past or the future, problems, difficulties. Whatever thought is really irrelevant. As soon as you notice yourself drifting off, just bring yourself back to an awareness of the breath. That becomes your mantra. Just watching the breath. Flowing in and out, observing the sensations. Now you have a sense that it's not really you who's breathing. The breath is breathing you. Become the pure witness. This identifies you from your body, your personality. This is the whole point of any spiritual practice, any meditation. So just let that process happen. You don't have to be in control of it. This is about not being in control. Just allow the breath to happen. All you've got to do is watch it. Observe these subtle sensations in your nostrils. Your nose and it's in the area between your nose and your upper lip. For the next few minutes of deep silence. Notice any thoughts coming in to distract you. 
you're away from your breath. Just notice now, don't get upset or angry or frustrated. Don't resist them in any way. Just observe them in the same detached way as you're observing your breath. And then return your attention to the breath. If it helps you, you can imagine you're just blowing them away with the breeze of your breath. They're like clouds. That's it. Shifting, changing, they're not permanent, ephemeral, temporary. And they cannot obscure the eternal sky in your mind to take your true away. So just let them go, the breeze of your breath, and return your mind. All your attention on your breath. In a couple of minutes, see so you can focus entirely 100% attention just on the sensations of your breath, going in and out of your nostrils, just noticing those subtle sensations in the nostrils and the tip of the nose, bottom of the nose, and between the nose and the upper lip. So you can focus 100%. Attention, have no distracting thoughts. The next couple of minutes of deep silence. And so, gently on the count of three, you're going to open your eyes. So one, just noticing all your body sensations. And then you notice the stomach rise, the chest rise, the subtle flow there into the nostril. There's a whole warm tingling sensation flowing up your spine. Notice what else is happening in your body. Smile at the top of the inhale. You just notice this state compared with half an hour ago when you entered the session. You're feeling clearer, calmer, lighter. 
the more you notice these states, the more you anchor them in. And start to become your default states of awareness. You notice it, smile, exhale. Make a little sighing sound on the back of your foot. Call it the jai breath. If you've done yoga, you're familiar with it. Maybe so fogging sunglasses, keep your mouth closed. Notice that sighing sound of the air flow out of your nostrils, chest and the stomach. Just gently suck back in, feel subtle energy flowing down from channeling your body into your lower stomach and your groin. On the count of two, just notice the weight of your body pressing down into the chair, your feet touching the ground. Notice what you're feeling and touching with your hands. You breathe in again, maybe there's a subtle smell in your nose, taste in your mouth, you're noticing all these subtle sensations. Or noticing what you're hearing. Whatever it is, you just notice subjectively detached. You're not naming, judging, labeling, interpreting, resisting. Any sounds, just allow them to arise and they subside. They arise and they pass away. Arising and passing away. This is the nature of this world. And if you can observe it in a detached, equanimous way, stop being emotionally and mentally affected by it as much. Start to be able to find being called the peace, peace of God that passes all understanding. So I hope you experienced a little taste of that over the last 20 minutes. You can stay connected to that piece just by watching your breath. Keep some awareness in your breath as we continue with the session. I remind you to do that every so often. Keep watching your breath. Staying connected to this underlying awareness. That's all we connect to, is your true awareness. That is not affected by thoughts, emotions, Sensations, perceptions, mental judgments, evaluations, none of that is really you. And you are pure formless awareness. And breath is one of the keys to staying connected to that awareness, to not losing it, going off on a, a mind wandering trip. That's our minds like to do. So just keep watching your breath, keep some attention on the breath for the rest of the session. So it is said, so it is done. And three, just open your eyes. Take a minute just to look around, noticing the various objects in the room, if you're in the room, surrounding you in a very detached way. And again, don't don't interpret them, don't name them, don't judge them, don't label them in any way. Just notice. And we'll move on to another object. If you're doing the exercise correctly, you'll see that the awareness is the same. It's underlying peace, stillness that you've connected with. Hopefully quite deeply over the last 20 minutes. It is still there. You know you're not fully engaged in the world again, or your senses are active. You can maintain this detached, calm state. That's why we practice meditation. That's why we practice these mind training exercises, which are us training us to stay in this peaceful, calm, equanimous state, not, not reacting to the vicissitudes of and if you can stay in that state, then be 
peace of God, as it's been called, that passes all understanding is yours, not intellectually, not as a theory, but as your own experience, moment by moment by moment. So, this brings us to the end of the meditation. Um, I'm just going to, uh, to unmute you all. And we can have a little uh, conversation. So, typically, our structure of these sessions is I'm just going to ask you to unmute. Is after meditation, we have a chance to just express. It's called an expression session. So you don't have to, but anyone would like to express whatever's whatever's going for you, whatever's on your mind, whatever's arising, thoughts, emotions, situations in your life that are triggering thoughts and emotions. It's just a way of expressing those in a safe, non-judgmental space. Um, they are being recorded. This will go out uh, to other people. So if you don't want to share anything, then don't. But um, part of this path is really about being honest with yourself. And uh, this is a chance to just be really honest. And almost certainly uh, other people will resonate if you're being really honest, because we all have the same, the same problems, the same difficulties, the same issues arising human condition is universal. So it's an opportunity just to talk about those in a, uh, no, one, no one comments. The idea of an expression session is everyone simply listens respectfully when you finish, you say I'm done, and then someone else can have a, have a chance. As I said, it's not obligatory, you don't have to do it, but if anyone wants to share, now's the, now's the, now's the time. So um, most of you still muted. I'm just trying to unmute. You can accept that. Unmute yourself. So how? Um, just a, a quick question before we go into an expression session. How did you find the? Um, how did you find that meditation? Any difficulties? Any anything? Did you find your mind wandering? Hi, it's James. Uh, I enjoyed it, but yes, um, my mind was wandering at times. Uh, but I've just learned to acknowledge that now. I don't beat myself about it. Just acknowledge it. Uh, carry mm. on. Try to concentrate my breath. Mm. Uh, I found it. Uh, very calm and peaceful. Great for that, thank you. Excellent. Yeah, just, uh, you know, if, you, if you're doing meditation and thoughts come in, um, that, that is what will happen uh, to start with um, and for a long time. The mind is a wandering mind. It's been thinking like this for, for many, many years. You're not just going to suddenly change that pattern. What breath watching tends to do is it tends to actually bring these thoughts and emotions up, which is part of the process of becoming aware of them and then releasing them. So you just observe, you notice, and you return your attention to the breath. Something like that, but um, not not easy. Did anyone find um, find it difficult? Um, please do yeah um no i accept that the thoughts will come up and it's just it is what it is and you know i, I listened to something else recently where they said just imagine a, a wave is let them go with the wave mm. i know i know you say don't label but i also just say okay well this is a past and then i let it go or well, this is a future and I let it go if it's a thought. Um, I think what I, and I've said this with you <laughs> a couple of months back, is this when we start is the, the breathing and how, how long we hold it for. So I just, 
I just go with my own rhythm because I know that. Yeah, this is just the flow. Don't, yeah, it's but in the beginning, it's your own natural like, flow. I don't know when anymore. you're going to say breathe out, and I just I just breathe out when I need to breathe out, and I just follow my own rhythm. <laughs> mm. Yeah. <laughs> So there's, there's different uh, techniques that you can use. But uh, breath watching, as you know, I just guided you through, is just natural. You just watch the breath. You let it do yeah, its Yeah, yeah. You just observe, really, you know, sort of detached. But I just did uh, a 10-day Vipassana course, and we did three days of that, just watching your breath in that same way. Very simple. Mm. Observe that 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 little area. So what I liked about it is it's very focused. You just you just observe this area in the nostril. Okay, thanks, Cara, for joining. Um, yeah, you know, feel free to uh, to join us again. Um, I'll talk about the art of letting go course as we go on in the session, kicking off today. This is the introductory session. Um, so you know, if anyone. Anyone who wants to do it at the end of this, um, you'll probably have a good idea. And um, I'll, I'll uh, then talk about how you can do that and the processes. But if you need to go, then um, enjoy your lunch. Um, so yeah, just to return to this, it's just so simple, you know, watching your breath for three days, but you just notice how the mind starts to wander. And, you know, instead of resisting it, the, the, the thing is just to observe it and say, well, that's, that is what's um, supposed to happen. The mind, the mind will get, will, will activate when you watch your breath. And so it's a way of actually becoming aware of, uh, of stuff in your um, arising in your, coming from your subconscious. And then just observing and saying, okay, I'm not going to resist it, not going to get upset. Whoever's arising, if it helps you to say that's a past thought, you can. You just bring your attention back to the breath. You just notice. Notice the breath, the thought goes away, something else arises. Um, and, and that's part of the process of actually going deeper into your mind and bringing this stuff up into conscious awareness. And that's and that's how we uh, process things and we release them. So that's um, a very, very simple practice, but you can do that as a meditation practice. Um, it's a very powerful practice in its own right. So. Any other comments on that? Anyone like to share anything? Well, I'll put them in an expression session if you can just uh, just share whatever's share whatever's arising. Not just in this session, but in life. Any thoughts, any emotions coming up for you? James, you like to share anything? Um, I'm just thinking, uh, done a meditation the other day, and uh, you said something. It's really stuck in my mind. Uh, I found it for me to be the first favorite is of the ego. Uh, to be very, very powerful, you know. Uh, just say that again. What did I say? So I think I'm losing my voice. <laughs> mm. you, you, you said failure is of the ego. Failure is of the ego. Mm. Yeah, and uh, that's, uh, for me that was um, that was really powerful. I keep thinking about it, um, and and through the meditations, I'm learning and have learned to kind of pause for thought, just to step back from the egoic mind, you know, and kind of listen. The guidance rather than kind of make my own plans and you know um mm -hmm. but, but just you know I'm, I'm really pleased what you said the other day in the meditation that mm -hmm. one phrase it just really stuck in my mind uh 
in fact, um, I would say, kind of changed my outlook, you know, uh, really has changed my outlook. Uh, I'm wanting to kind of sit down now and uh, do more meditations at the start of the day, you know, and <clears throat> uh, start my day that way and kind of do some more for guidance. Uh, also try to and what I would like to do, but kind of instead of dominating those plans with my thoughts, kind of meditate, sit back and, and listen for the guidance as well. Uh, that's it, I'm done. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Oh, so I won't comment on it now, but this is all stuff we can discuss. This expression session's done. Anyone else like to share anything? Kim. I uh, just feel feeling right. calm at <laughs> the moment. Really sinking into my chair. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, that's that's it for now. Thank you, Jono. Okay. Uh, Victoria. Anything you'd like to share? I know I'm I'm good, thanks. I'm just in a place where I don't know, I just need to keep things simple so I don't get overwhelmed, really. But it was very calming despite the loss of thoughts. <laughs> mm. Good. And welcome to the course. Thank you. And we have Janine. I haven't spoken to Janine for a couple of years. Janine, how are you doing? Would you like to share anything? Hi, John. Great to have this email today, the message. Mm. Yeah. One day at a time in this crazy world we're living in. But I have found that meditation has certainly helped me in a very big way. And I was at a friend yesterday and she started A Course in Miracles. And I told her about you. And then I got this WhatsApp today and I thought, well, the sun is there. It's time to sit back and let's go. So I'm happy to be here. See you. Hope you're well and your family's well. And please, God, let's go from here. Okay. Thank you. Are you going you gonna to join the course I'd like to, as you know, when possible that I'm able to, I certainly will appear. Mm, okay. I can't promise all the time, but um, yeah. Okay. You know, we are you are you overseas at the moment? No, I'm um, I'm in South Africa. I'm down in a little town called McGregor. Oh, beautiful. Hey. Okay, well, you know that we up in Joburg are having water restrictions or cutoffs and ele no electricity with lockdown, um, with load shedding. Mm. So there's no Wi-Fi and I'm not on other webinars for work, then I would love to. Mm. Is it going to be the same time every day or will you let us know in advance? Yeah, so um, 1.30 p.m., that's SA time, that's 12.30 UK time, for those in the UK. Um, there'll be every a, day, no? Yeah. Except Saturdays, so okay. we have a break on Saturday, but um, every day, uh, six days of the week, and and then there's also an evening session, um, which will be oh. at, uh, at eight thirty, SA time. Eight thirty SA time. Yeah. Okay, that will be better. Yeah. Or seven thirty UK time. So. Um, we'll do you know similar kind of format. We we'll do some meditation. Do some expression and then a uh, bit of discussion where we get into some of the theory of the course. I'm sending out daily emails, WhatsApp messages, so um, you know I can add you to the to the mailing list and uh, to the WhatsApp group. Um, just uh, send me your email address. I'm not sure. Yeah. 
I, I probably have it, but it's, it's no, I've got a new one. So I will I'll send it to you on WhatsApp after this. Yes. So you've got an update. Great. That's perfect. Great. And hi everybody and enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, good to good to connect with you again. And you. Then there's uh there's Jesse. So I'm not sure we've met Jesse. Um or have we? Just um, open it up. Is Jesse gonna be able to speak? No, on mute. Yeah, I'm asking you to unmute. Isn't happening? Mm, no, doesn't seem like Jesse able to unmute. It. Okay, well, um, yeah, welcome, um, Jesse. And uh, if you want to share anything, just, um, just unmute yourself. Um, so I'm going to do a bit of sharing, actually. Um, because I'm uh, much a facilitator as a course participant, so um, talk a little bit about my experience over the last couple of weeks. Um, I did a uh, a Vipassana retreat, uh, which is nine days of silence, so you, you can talk to the course organizers about logistical things. And you can ask questions uh, to the teacher, so you're not in complete silence because that could be pretty impractical. But you can't you can't speak to any of the other uh, course participants. So uh, there's there's uh, 20, 30 guys doing it. You segregated from the women. They 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 do their own thing in another in another part. Um, but it's just silent. You're just walking past these guys, you know, hanging around them. There's no, there's no chit chatter, which is is very interesting. Um, and the whole idea is to help you to go, you know, very deeply within, not get distracted by you know, all the stuff. Normally, speech and and thought go together. So we think and we speak. We just kind of splurge whatever our thoughts are out, and then we chatter compulsively. So it stops that. The idea is to stop the mind. And then doing about 10 hours of meditation a day, roughly. Probably more actually, because I was I was doing meditation kind of my own thing. When we had breaks, I just sit as in Worcester, there were mountains. So I just sort of sit in nature and just kind of observe and reflect, which is a form of meditation. But to do this breath watching, we did the first three days of that, and then followed by um Vipassana, uh, which is just, uh, watching your body sensations, effectively scanning your body. Um, but if you do it for hours and hours, it's pretty profound. It takes you very deeply into your mind. So it's kind of a deep dive for me. I needed some time out. I've spent a lot of time over the last couple of years teaching and putting stuff out there. And it was just time to go and refresh and sharpen the sore and go within and reflect and re-energize and um, process and so, yeah, a lot of stuff came up let go of stuff and um, I think I think it was, it was very valuable for me at the time to, 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 to do that and um, yeah as a result yeah, there have been some, some interesting synchronicities and miracles what of course a miracle we call miracles happening uh, subsequent to that um, which all part of the flow that I'm in, and it's, you know, it's led me to to do you know this course. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it differently from now on. Um, no one's going to be excused because they can't pay for it. So I'm just going to trust that spirit will spirit will guide me, and uh, you know, as you give, you receive. Um, the, the way they did the passion thing was donation donation and they it's not just online and you know, they have a physical retreat center to feed you for 10 days um and it's all you know by grace you just get donations from, from past students um and you know that model seems to work for them they've got many of these centers around the world so i guess it would just stay a uh, call to maybe go deeper and just trust really trust the uh, spirit that I'll be guided and uh, everything everything will be taken care of if you if 
you do it in the right spirit. And so I'm really looking forward to the course. It's going to be, uh, I've done this a number of times, but every course is different, different people, different energy. And um, just enjoy seeing, you know, the shift and the changes in, um, in people and in myself as we go along. So what I'd uh, advise, just dive into this, dive into the process, really you know, give it a chance to work in your life. Do as many live sessions as you can. I'm going to be sending you emails with recorded material as well. I'm sending you daily lessons to do, um, workbook, workbook lessons from A Course in Miracles, text readings, just try and do as much of it as you can. So the more, you, you, the more time you invest in this, you're really investing in your own in your own uh, transformation, in your own health and well-being, and ultimately your own enlightenment. Um, so what you put into the course, you'll you'll get out of it and and more. Well, I've seen my journey is the more you give to this kind of thing, spiritual practices, the more the spirit gives to you in strange and miraculous ways. It's not a not a commercial barter. It's not I give this and then I expect to get this back. You give freely and and it just happens. Yeah. And that's what uh, the miracle is all about. So uh, yeah, that's my my sharing. Um, and if anyone else would like to share, now's the time. Otherwise, let's um, let's move on. I want to discuss some some of the the, the introductory. First of all, introductory. Uh, ideas around the course, how it came, what a course in miracles is and so on. Um, and then go into the uh, first part of the text, which is just a very short introduction, just to give you a, a high level overview of it. So anyone else want to share? Kim? Well, just a question, John, did you send something through by email today? I did. I've been sending uh, emails over the last couple of days. Oh, you receive it. Which email? No. I don't think so. Okay. Uh, which email address? Um, your Koya one, Kim Dot Taylor at Koya. Yeah. And from and your your address was both in the frick uh, So I send it from my email server. So the um, email address is mail at lifemail dot space. So mail yeah. at life. Lifemail dot space. I'll put it in the chat. Um, so it'll be from that. And if you Google Jonathan Quayle, let really me search him on Quayle. Did everyone else, uh, well, for Jesse and, and Janine wouldn't have got it, but Victoria, did you receive my email? James, you're getting the emails? I think you said you're getting them. Uh, I'll be safe from yes, thank you. Oh, okay. So, yeah, unfortunately, email is an inexact science, and sometimes it can go into spam. Or if you use Gmail, it can go into your promotions folder. But um, you can teach it. So, for instance, the Gmail that's going to spam, and you drag it into your inbox, and if there's a promotions folder, you drag it into your inbox, and it'll then ask you, do you, you know, you want to do this for all these kind of messages and um, you can do that you can also set up email filters so i did send out uh, an attachment with a whole list of uh, detailed instructions to how to how to make sure the uh, email my email address is whitelisted so that you you, you make sure you get those emails because that's one of the primary ways of my delivering the content i'm going to be sending an email every day um, so if you're not getting those, then uh, let me know. Uh, Victoria, are you getting them okay? Yeah, yeah, I just put a note in the chat. Yeah, they, they've they gone into the spam. <laughs> wow. Yeah, my books are the plaque, they've gone into spam. Okay, so if you, if you drag it from spam into your inbox, I don't know if you, what, program you're using but um yeah. you can you can uh, if you use gmail it, it should then start allocating them to your primary folder 
if you do that. Um, and there's actually an attached uh, attached uh, PDF to that email, um, which will give you detailed instruction for all the different email programs um, as to how to whitelist it. Basically means you set up a filter and you can filter it in uh, to a specific folder, um, if you like, so, so to make sure that doesn't happen. So just check out that, if you found one of my emails, check out that, that PDF and whichever email program you're in there, it's pretty comprehensive. It should have instructions and use them to make sure that you know, you're getting my emails um, either into your primary inbox or you can create a separate folder. Um, the problem with that is you can then forget to check that folder. So if you, if you know that you will, um, you're disciplined about it, then just check that folder every day, root it into that folder. And then um, you know all the all the course material is is there. Um, if not, then leave it in your primary inbox. But what I'd suggest is create a folder for the course, so that once you've read the email, you then drag the email into that folder and all the all the material is there, so you can reference it easily. Um, and you know that this is for you can you can return to these emails. Now, there's a lot of information and a lot of good good content in it. So, you know, keep them as, as reference material in a folder where you can, you can access them. Okay, any other questions? No? All right, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move on to um, sharing my screen. Uh, well, I want to talk a little bit about um, about A Course in Miracles and uh, how it came, what it says. We'll just go through the introduction. If you have any questions at any point, then feel free to ask. So the Arts of Letting Go course is based on this teaching of A Course in Miracles. Uh, which is really a teaching in, in forgiveness, a teaching that teaches people how to forgive, or I prefer saying to, to let go, because forgiveness can be misinterpreted. People understand it differently. It's got biblical connotations as well. Jesus talked about forgiveness in the, in the New Testament. A lot of people misunderstand it, whereas letting go is not as easily misinterpreted. Letting go kind of says what it is. Not letting go of letting go of the thoughts, letting go of emotions that do not serve you, that you're aware are harmful, uh, they are negative. Negative means they negate. They negate the truth. They negate what is true and good and pure and holy in you. And you feel that. You feel that in your mind, in your emotions, if you're in a negative state. You know, so part of this course is to train you to observe it, to notice when you're in a negative state of mind. And then the second stage is simply to, to let it go. And there are many ways of, of doing that. And that's what I'll be training you to do, to get very good at this art of letting go of negative thoughts and emotions as they arise. And as I um, talked about in the masterclass, most of you have done. That's the one essential skill. That's the one thing you need to learn. You can learn how to let go of negative thoughts and emotions at will, become aware of them and let them go very quickly. Uh, you will most life because life is life continuously testing you and challenging you. And if you continuously react in a negative way, there's no way you're ever going to find happiness, peace of mind, uh, flow, any kind of fulfillment sense of higher purpose, uh, well-being, all of these things rely on your ability to, to let go and not, not allow these negative emotions to, uh, to affect you. And they're going to come, for sure, but the quicker you can learn to let go of them, uh, the better. So I just want to talk a bit about uh, Course in Miracles and how it came. You might know the story, but um, I'm going to talk about it because it's an example of two people who were 
in not a very good space in their in their minds in their lives. They were um, academics working at um, the uh, Columbia University's College of Physicians and Surgeons in New York City. So one of the biggest, uh, noisiest, complex cities in the world and in a highly academic setting. There was a lot of uh, personal investment in their own stories and their status. As, as um, Helen, who, Helen Schuckman, who's the scribe of the question of the wrote, uh, they were concerned with personal and professional acceptance and status. Uh, in general, they had considerable investment in the values of the world. Their lives were hardly in accord with anything. The course advocates. Right? So they were they were completely not living the way uh, course of miracles suggest. Um, Helen herself was was um, an academic. She was uh, conservative, atheistic, and. Um, she describes this, uh, this situation that occurred when, where um, they were actually on their way to a, a disciplinary hearing. Her and her boss, a guy called Bill Thetford, William Thetford, head of the department. And they had, uh, they had these disciplinary hearings frequently because there, were, there was a lot of conflict, there was a lot of anger, aggression. Everyone was, you know, what's in it for me, backstabbing. And um, on, on, on the way to a disciplinary hearing, he turned to her in the car and said, you know, I'm really just, I'm tired of this. There must be a, another way. And, um, and she agreed to help him find it. And that was the invitation to what Course in Miracles calls the Holy Spirit to, uh, to come in and, uh, and help them. And so, what, what happened after that was um, she started having a whole lot of symbolic dreams. Uh, she saw herself in white robes or like some kind of priestess. And uh, she described these images to Bill. Um, and because they were psychologists, you know, they understood that this can happen. Um, and then in October of 1965, this voice, Suddenly, somebody said, this is a course of miracles, please take note. And uh, she was quite freaked out by that, but she, she decided to go, she phoned Bill and the advisor just to go with it, take notes, see, you know, see what comes out. If it's all gibberish, then we'll just, you know, forget it and um, then it never happened. But she wrote down what it said. She took down the introduction to a course of miracles and uh, she, she brought it into Bill the next morning. And said, well, you know, this is good stuff. And no, no disrespect that you didn't come up with it. She said, yes, I know. It was, as she describes it, a kind of rapid inner dictation that she took down in a shorthand notebook. And um, it just came of its own accord. She would write. And then the voice would go away and it would just come back later and pick up again where it left off. Um, she said it made her very uncomfortable, but but she felt like you know it was it was a uh, calling, and so she continued. She would take the, the notes into Bill Fetford, and he would type them up. And over the course of seven years, uh, that is how uh, a course in miracles came about. Um, it consists of uh, three volumes. There's a 669 page text, 188 page workbook students and a 92 page manual for teachers. And then subsequently uh, after its first publishing, there were a couple of uh, little supplements called the Song of Prayer and uh, uh, psychotherapy uh, practices and uh, principles um, was also also added as kind of supplements, which are now become part of the whole uh, Course in Miracles. So it's quite a volume. There's uh, something like 1200 pages of um, material to be studied and uh, it's although it deal, uh, deals with universal spiritual themes um, it's in a, uh, a Christian uh, format so the the language is Christian here yeah, it talks about Christ the Holy Spirit God um, 
but don't be put off by those terms. So um, a lot of people are, which is a shame, but um, once you come to understand the course uh, a bit more deeply and I'll let me guide you to do that. Those terms are just placeholders, they're just pointers to uh, fundamental ideas and principles in your own mind. Um, and there are other terms, you, know, you can use other terms. There's other spiritual traditions, other religions that have other terms for really the same thing. So you just see words as pointers. In fact, in A Course in Miracles, Jesus says, words are symbols twice removed from reality. So uh, don't, don't get put off by words. Um, they're just pointers. Mm -hmm. the, the reality they're pointing to is what's important. And it's not about the theology, as of course says, it's um, universal theology is impossible, but a universal experience is not only possible, but necessary. So it's about going beyond dogma and uh, using the course as a way to have a universal experience you know, of something else. There's another presence in this world, in this universe, and you can call that whatever you want. God is one word for it. presence, love, being, uh, the Atman, doesn't matter what you call it. There's something there. And this is about giving you a universal experience of that through this particular path. So it's a spiritual path back to God. As you said, there are many others uh, differing from them. This, this one differs from them only in form. They all lead to, to God. In the end, um, I believe that this uh, course, of course, in miracles, is the quickest way. Otherwise, I wouldn't be studying it and teaching it. Um, I've looked at many other parts. I've tried other things. Uh, I think this is the, the, the quickest, the most direct way. Um, but if you have another path, if you another religion, and uh, you're genuinely going into the depths of that, uh, you will find that. Uh, the, the same themes crop up. It's, this is really speaking the same language. And um, resonate should resonate because truth is universal, as I said. The curriculum is universal. We're all going to uh, we're all going to take this curriculum at some point. You've just chosen to take it now, which is why you've turned up today. So um, thank you for doing that. And thank yourself because it does take a, a time and, and, and a, a commitment and time and effort to, um, to do this. Uh, no one attained enlightenment, not even Jesus and Buddha, uh, without putting in you know, some work. Spiritual practices are essential. And that's what I'll be guiding you through over the, uh, the next six weeks daily to, to have an experience, your own experience of truth to deepen into that experience. As uh, Jesus says, you know, some of the ideas, um, the workbook, which you'll be working through the first 35 lessons of presents, you'll find hard to believe. Others may seem to be quite startling. This does not matter. You're merely asked to apply the ideas as you are directed to do. You're not asked to judge them at all. You're asked only to use them. It is a use that will give them meaning to you and will show you that they are true. Remember only this, you need not believe the ideas, you need not accept them, you need not even welcome them. Some of them you may actively resist. None of this will matter or decrease their efficacy. But do not allow yourself to make exceptions in applying the ideas the work that contains. And whatever your reactions to the ideas may be, use them. Nothing more than that is required. So it's actually a pretty simple process. This is just saying, this maybe I didn't mention it, Jesus was the voice he was speaking to. Alan Shuckman, he identified himself as such pretty early on. Uh, so he is the ultimate author of this. Um, he's, he was a man, he lived 2,000 years ago, who ascended, he resurrected, he ascended. Um, he, he overcame the ego entirely, and now he's teaching us how to do it. Um, so that makes me pay attention. He's not someone still stuck in time and space. He's someone who's escaped. 
it's transcended time and space entirely. And from that higher point of view, he's now showing us uh, the way, the same way that he, that, that he found his way out of this world, this dream, illusion, call it whatever you want. Uh, he's instructing us, giving us very specific detailed instruction and uh, mind training exercises in this uh, workbook to help us to, to train our minds to, to escape. And he's saying, you don't have to believe this to start with. You won't probably believe all these things. You may actively resist them. But just do the process. If you're simply willing to do the process, to do the exercises, uh, to keep on just doing it and observe your reactions, then the process will be effective. You've just got to do it. Is a, a great um, slogan. I think my favorite commercial slogan uh, is the Nike saying, you know, just do it. A lot of wisdom in those three words. Because you're not judging, you're not resisting, you're not reacting. There's no craving, in Buddhist terms, craving or aversion. You're just doing it. Okay, I'm just going to do this because something in your, your mind says to you, this is worth doing. And if I just persevere and I just keep doing it, uh, you know, I will benefit. Um, so as the course says, this course is a beginning and not an end. No more specific lessons are signed. There's no more need of that. Okay, this is a start, really. This is the start of a journey for you. And at the end, at the end of the course, uh, you get to the point where you've trained your mind uh, to such an extent that you can really let go and let God. You can trust this voice of God, the Holy Spirit, your intuition to guide you to in, in what to say, what to do, what to how to direct your mind and when to come to you in silence. Um, so it's it's to bring you under the guidance of this voice, um, what's called the Holy Spirit. That's really is is looking out for your best interests. It's trying to help you find your way back to this eternal loving presence in your mind, to unite your mind with that presence, to, to accept it completely into your mind uh, as you. This is who you really are. This is your true self. And in the process, you must reject what the Course calls your ego. And your ego is simply a sense of a separate self, a sense of that you are some, somehow separate, and different and alone, um, you're separated from all of your brothers and sisters and everyone and everything in this world because you have a body and uh, you get identified with that body, attached to the body, needs, the desires, the fears that go with that body identity. All of that is what the ego is. So it's a, it's a pretty comprehensive com uh, construct. A lot of people, you know, think of ego and they go, oh, it's just, oh, he's got a big ego. He's, you know, full of his own self-importance or he likes to blow his own trumpet and puff himself up with his accomplishments or his possessions. Or, and yeah, that's part of ego, but it, it goes way deeper. The ego is, is your sense of self, your sense of, of who you are as a separate identity. And uh, that is pretty fundamental to most people's experience of life most people think they're separate they think they're human they think that everything they experience is real and uh, the course is designed to undo that belief very simple to, to get you to question all of that and come to your own realization your own understanding uh, the same understanding that jesus came to that all the masters buddha laozi every every spiritual master genuine spiritual masters come to the same understanding and they say the same thing maybe in slightly different ways that nothing real can be threatened nothing unreal exists therein lies the peace of God so um, actually nothing in this in this world truly exists right? and nothing real which points to a transcendent dimension. All the, all the great teachings, the perennial philosophy talks about this transcendent dimension, which is not affected at all by anything that goes on here in this world, in this universe. 
So it can't really be threatened. And the unreal, which is anything that occurs in this domain of time and space, simply doesn't exist. Herein lies the peace of God. So that is part of the, uh, the introduction, which leads me nicely into this introduction to A Course in Miracles. So what I want to suggest is to get some uh, interaction going. Um, <clears throat> is that everyone read a, uh, a couple of sentences on this. And, uh, and then we'll just unpack those sentences. Because um, what you'll start to, to see and learn as you go with the Course in Miracles is that each sentence is profound. There's meaning in, in every word and every sentence. And uh, so to really you know, get the value from it, you unpack it, you know, sentence by sentence. Um, and obviously, if you have any, anyone has any questions as we go through, feel free to ask. So, uh, Victoria, would you like to start? Just read the first couple of couple of sentences. Are we starting right at the top, like this is a course in miracles. There. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> This is a course in miracles. It is a required course. Only the time you take uh, it well, is voluntary. Stop. Someone else will read that. So, okay. um, yeah, anything strike you in those two sentences? Anything meaningful? Anything you don't understand? No. Okay, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna unpack this this uh, you know just word by word, sentence by sentence. So this is a course in miracles. So he's saying it's a course. Right? I'm gonna I'm gonna. What do you do with the course? You study material. So he's he's setting the parameter. He's saying this is a course. So I'm gonna guide you through this course. I'm gonna train your mind. Of course, you typically learn something. So, uh, but it's a course in miracles. That's actually what, what uh, got me interested in the course in the, the title to start with. At the time, I was very much into manifestation. I'm like, oh, I'd like to be able to do miracles it's like Jesus did, you know, walk on water, turn water into wine, raise the dead, that kind of thing. Cool. Uh, as I discovered, um, so I started uh, you know, working with the course and studying. Uh, that's not really what he means by miracles. So just that word miracle, uh, there's, a, there's a whole lot of understanding. It probably took me about 10 years, to be honest, to really understand what a miracle actually was. So I'll save you 10 years uh, right now. I'll just, just explain my understanding of what a miracle is, according to you know, the Course's true teaching. It's a, a fundamental shift in your uh, perception, in your mindset and attitude. Uh, from a base of fear, which is all about separation, uh, seeing yourself separate from other people and other things, uh, reacting through that separation uh, in, in a contracted, restricted way uh, that we call fear. We can also call, you can also call it anger. You can call it irritation, judgment. There's always guilt because you feel guilty for your, your apparent sins um, because you don't want to deal with the guilt, you then project them out onto, onto other people and try and make them feel guilty by blaming them. None of that is true. Well, all the course is saying is none of that, that entire thought is not true. And when you recognize that, in the moment you recognize that, you know, often as a specific instant, so something might trigger you, you've got Fear going on, you've got irritation, anger, anxiety, whatever's arising that's negative, that's really blocking your awareness of the truth. Um, you then you then let it go. And you, you come to an awareness that actually only love is true. And when you shift like that from thought system of the ego based on fear to the thought system of our spirit based on love, then that's an authentic miracle. And that's really what the Course is, is training us to do. Because he knows that you're going to be tested. There are going to be times when 
you, 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 you go into a negative state of mind. That's your pattern. The mind is not just going to come out of that straight away. This is a, a lifelong process of mind training. And whenever you do that shift from fear to love, using the techniques that he teaches, using this idea of forgiveness, uh, then it's a miracle. And so it's a course in training you how to, to work miracles. And those happen within you, not about doing anything external. Although sometimes you may be guided to do something, to say something, that's very possible. And then the miracle takes on some kind of form that can happen um, because we're still working within a world of form to try and undo that world of form, to try and transcend it. So miracles work within that framework of form, of the domain of time and space. And they show you through your thoughts and how they translate into words and actions. Uh, that actually love works much better in fear. And uh, when you start to see those results, then you start to become more and more convinced that this is the way you want to be. This is the way you want to live your life. Um, and it's the only way you're going to correct your perception. You don't just go straight from this really being heavily invested in the ego and believing this, this world is very real, and very frightening, uh, guilt is justified, fear is justified, you know, anger is justified, and even if negative thoughts and emotions are fully justified. You don't just go from that state to full enlightenment and being completely out, out of your body in the pure awareness of, of love or God uh, instantly. It takes, it takes time, it takes uh, discipline, practice, and that's, you know, that's why he's designed the Course in Miracles. Um, so that's what it is. And he's saying it's a required course. What does that mean? Right? It means that it's required to be taken by everyone at some point. Right? And then he continues, only the time you take it is voluntary. So it's up to you when you're going to take this course. That's the voluntary aspect of it. But it's required of everyone because... Free will does not mean that you can establish in the curriculum. Right? The curriculum is set. Truth is true, whether you acknowledge it or not, irrespective. Truth is, is still there. Truth has been unaffected by anything that you or anyone else has done. Um, so we can't establish that curriculum. We can't establish that the truth is true. And that ultimately, the entire purpose of this universe is to return your mind to the truth. That's the curriculum. We can't establish that. That is established by God, the source of all life. Um, but we, we do have free will temporarily in time in that we can choose when we want to learn our lessons, when we want to take, when we want to take this course. You've all shown up today. My congratulations, right? So obviously for you, the time is now. You don't want to delay anything. You want to take this course and uh, you want to learn this, this, this wisdom so that it can help you. All right. So I've done my reading. Uh, Kim, do you want to read the next couple of sentences? From number five, right? Yeah. Where the arrow is. Okay. It means only that you can elect what you want to take at a given time. The course does not aim at teaching the meaning of love, for that is beyond what can be taught. Okay. Everything makes sense to you there? Any questions? So I think what it's saying is that, like you said, it's truth is truth. It's just you, you've got the, the choice of free will to decide what lessons you want to take when. Mm. Mm. Exactly. Then it says the course does not aim at me teach the meaning of love. It's just it's experiential. Mm. But, um, that is beyond what they taught. I think you're I, I'm, I'm guessing that while you're doing the course, things may happen and you'll maybe 
on a deeper level sense what is being taught. That's my what I'm extracting from that. Yeah. It's ultimately it's bringing you to your own experience because truth is experiential. No one can tell you the truth. That in fact is the difference between religion and um, authentic an authentic spiritual path. Any any authentic spiritual path is about your own experience. It's not anyone's dogma, you know, you must believe this. Say five Hail Marys, here's the you know official dogma. It's not about that at all. It's about your own experience of this transcendent thing that really we don't understand. Um, this what is love? Most people haven't got a clue what love is. It takes many, many years in my experience. Where I just had a some profound experience of a Vipassana retreat. And after you know 15 years of studying this course, you know, it's still just like going. Finally, maybe just starting to get a glimpse of what of what love is, of what it means, and um, experientially. So, I'll I'll describe actually one of the experiences I had. I was on about day nine into the process. I was in my room um, having meditated, and I just I lay down because it was. So tired of sitting. My back was sore and stuff because you sit hard now. So I lay down. And just for a brief moment, and it might have only been a few seconds, maybe it was certainly it certainly would have been less than 30 seconds. Didn't, didn't, you, know, you lose track of time. It was just this sudden awareness, and there was no thought at all. Just a just a pure awareness, formless awareness. And that was enough. I just went, oh. And then immediately I started like thinking, but it was very reflective thought. I just saw so clearly that that formless awareness is the truth. That is all there really is. Got a little glimpse of it. Even a few seconds of it enough to change your life. That formless awareness is all there really is. And all we've done, and this is, and what the course is going to teach you to recognize is that all of our thoughts and all of our emotions are just like clouds, just obscuring. They just come over and they obscure the formless awareness, just like cloud patterns. And the only purpose of this world, this illusion, as Jesus called it, is to obscure your, your own true formless awareness, your own true nature. And that's why we invented the world. So that all these thoughts and these emotions to obscure that formless awareness of dust. And when I really saw that, I felt it. It was experiential. I cried. It's like, oh my God, what have we done? Why, 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 why did we do that? Why would we obscure pure formless awareness, this love, this is what love is, pure formless awareness. For this, or you know, all the dramas that go on in this world, the ups and the downs, the vicissitudes of life, thoughts and emotions continuously blowing through our minds. And that just, the only purpose is to obscure this, this love. Call it love, call it formless awareness, call it God. It's the very essence of your mind. It cannot be destroyed. That's why, well, I'm jumping here, but he says nothing real can be threatened. And nothing unreal exists. Pure formless awareness is pure formless awareness. It cannot be affected in any way by any thoughts or emotion. It simply is. And as he says, that's beyond what can be taught. You can't teach that. That will come of itself through spiritual practices, you know, if, you, if you're studying this kind of material, you're doing meditation, of itself, it will reveal itself because it's your true nature. So at some point, it will reveal itself. And that, can, that can't be taught it's, uh, as a result of, of a process. It will happen when it's meant to happen for you. Okay, so um, let's 
carry on. Um, Janine, do you want to read uh, the next couple of sentences? Number eight. Seven. No. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. I've got my glasses. Hold on. Um, it doesn't. Hold on. Sorry, doll. It does. It does aim, however, at removing the blocks to the awareness of love's presence, which is your natural inher inheritance. Sorry, I'm doing this on a phone. Okay. Um, Doing well. Do you want me to carry on? Uh, yeah, read, read another sentence and then we'll pause. The opposite of love is fear. But what is all encompassing can have no opposite. Absolutely true. Into the course can therefore. No, no, stop. 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 <laughs> stop. Okay. It's going to unpack those. Okay. Um, so any 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 questions about that? Is it all clear to that to you, those two sentences? I've learned that fear is false evidence appearing real. And the more we allow the negative of the absent of what actually is real, we create our own fear. And COVID has taught me and before then, but fully in COVID, that what we we plan and God loves. And every plan that I had has turned out not to work out because it wasn't meant to be. And I just I, I've just learned to let go, let go and let God. Let go and let God in every way, in every possible way. And the fear can cripple you. It can actually cripple your, your, your destiny that just something negative that you're feeling or someone said that you hold on to because you are not truly believing in a miracle. Because a miracle isn't tangible. A miracle in my eyes, a miracle is only tangible once it's happened. In order for a miracle to happen, you truly have to let go and believe that something better, bigger, healthier is coming your way in the right time that is meant for you. But in order to get that, you've got to believe it. Heart and awareness becomes heartened each time you become aware. Mm -hmm. And that, that's what I've learned. And I haven't done a course in miracles, but I've done other things. Mm. And at the end of the day, it's, it's believing. Mm. And for me, it's not about religion and Christ and Moses and whatever. It, it's, it's law of the universe. And it's, it's just keep it simple. Keep it simple because the, the, the other outside stuff is what creates the fears in you. Mm. We live on life's terms. We're in a physical life world and living on life's terms. And if we get caught up in what's going on, we wouldn't be with you today doing Course in Miracles. Mm. And yeah. just to refresh up, you know, just <clears throat> be grounded. Keep it simple. Mm. And in order to do that, you can only do that with a still mind in nature, in what God has given us to do it, never mind the medications and the doctors. For me, that's been my best medication ever throughout my journey, and it's mm. been a long one. Mm. Meditation is the best form of medication. Absolutely, <laughs> I agree. Oh, so thanks for sharing that. Um, you, you, truth is universal. So it doesn't, it doesn't you know, as Jesus, Jesus said, uh, in this, um, this introduction, you know, this is a universal uh, curriculum, universal experience. Universal theology is impossible, but a universal experience is not only possible, but necessary. So he's pointing us beyond religions, beyond dogmas, 
beyond beliefs even because ex experience isn't isn't a belief if you really experience something like for instance i explained you know that experience i had described that's not a belief that was the pure experience it wasn't anyone telling me this is so god is pure formless awareness it was it was an experiential understanding um and that's that's what the course is designed to to help you to experience in your own time, your own way, you know, when you're ready for it. So it, it aims at removing the blocks to the awareness of this presence, of love's presence, God's presence, whatever you want to call that presence uh, in your deeper mind, which is your natural inheritance. You're saying that's your natural state, that's your inheritance, that's given to you. Inheritance is you inherit it, you don't have to do anything to it, it's just given to you. Uh, it's just your own um, your own ego that's blocking you from the awareness of that. And then he says here, the opposite of love is fear. Okay, so he does this quite often, this sort of form of a sentence. The first part of the sentence is dualistic. Okay, apparently there's opposites. The opposite of love is fear, seemingly. But then he clarifies the second part of the sentence. What is all encompassing can have no opposite. It takes you out of duality, first part of the sentence, to non-duality. Okay? What is all encompassing can have no opposite. There is no opposite in truth. And that happens a lot during the Course in Miracles, as you'll see. What he's trying to do is get you to transcend your belief in duality. Okay, I'll meet you where you are. You believe in duality. You believe in opposites. You believe there's an opposite to love, and that's called fear or hatred or whatever you want to call it. Um, he just calls it fear because it's a, a placeholder for that whole egoic thought system. But actually, you may think that. So he's saying, well, what's all encompassing? Can I have no opposite? <laughs> really, it's impossible. There's no opposite. To love. So you're living in this impossible idea, the results of an impossible idea that fear is possible. Create this world, this illusory world that we seem to live in, where apparently that these opposites exist, but they don't really. And the whole course is designed to train your mind to see that, to come out of your belief in duality and come into a deep experiential understanding, your own understanding, of what is all-encompassing really has no opposite. And you stay rooted in that understanding. So even while you're working, functioning in this world, you are unshakable. You are economist because you realize that all of fear and all of its results are simply not real. And that love has no opposite. And you stay rooted in that awareness. That state of being, that state of mind, he is enlightened. That is a state of mind that people like Jesus, Buddha, mother, other masters in history attain. So it is possible. Um, but it takes time. It takes time and disciplines practice to attain it consistently because the world is based on the opposite. And so if you believe in the world's teaching, you keep being drawn back into this very dualistic world. Apparently there's opposites, you know, love and fear, up and down, hot and cold. Uh, in, every, in every instance, there's polarity. You know, uh, look at what's happening with COVID. Is there a virus? Is there not a virus? You're going to take the vaccination? You're not going to take the vaccination. We, we're dealing with these these polarities, these dualities all the time, apparently. And the only way out of them is to start understanding that all the results of fear simply are not real. They do not exist. False evidence appearing real, as you said, Jimmy. It all appears to be real, but is it really real? And uh, so you, it's starting to discern what is illusion and what is truth. That's that's a, a huge part of, of uh, what we, we're going to be uh, dealing with 
in this part of the lingual cord. Discerning the difference between truth and illusion. Because if you can determine the difference, then you can make accurate choices and you can make good decisions. If you're confused and you don't know what's love and what's fear and what's true and what's false, then you're going to be making poor decisions a lot of the time because you're going to be basing them on thoughts that are simply not true. So um, that leads us to the final little bit. James, do you want to read that? So this course can therefore be summed up. Okay. Uh, this course can therefore this course can therefore be summed up very simply in this way. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Yeah, and you may as well finish it. <laughs> Herein lies the peace of God. Mm. And that is a very short summary of the entire Course in Miracles. So if you fully understood that, experientially understood that, the depth of your being, you would not need the course. <laughs> you wouldn't need to do a Course in Miracles. You wouldn't need to do the Art of Letting Go course. I get it. I understand. But that is such a deep, I, I would compare these uh, three lines to a Zen koan. I don't know if you, any of you are familiar with the Zen Buddhist tradition, but in it they have these, these koans where they'll, the, the Zen master will, will give a, just a phrase, a sentence. For instance, what is the sound of one hand clapping is a Zen koan. And you kind of go, hmm, you know, the, the whole point of the koan is to stop your mind, to get you really to like stop your normal way of thinking, pause, reflect, and maybe go into, into that space, into, into a state of mind that's beyond logical thought, because logical thought is not going to take you there. In the same way, nothing real can be threatened. Okay. Sort of get that. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. And it seems to be stating the obvious, doesn't it? And yet the obvious has been so obscured by the ego that when it's stated as simply as this in three sentences, there's going to be a part of your mind that doesn't understand it, that doesn't want to understand it. If you really understood it, it's the undoing of your entire thought system. Nothing real can be threatened. Right? Truth, love, whatever you want to call that dimension cannot be threatened by anything. It is unshakable. It's unchangeable. It's eternal. It's permanent. This is what the Course in Miracles is pointing us to. It's what every great teaching, spiritual teaching is pointing us to. The perennial philosophy points to this transcendent dimension that is cannot be threatened by anything that happens in this world. And so the corollary of this is that nothing unreal exists. Because if it was true and it really existed, then it would threaten what's real. But if it's simply unreal and it has no real existence, then it is no real threat. The two go hand in hand. So in these two lines, he deals with truth and illusion, saying, What's true, this can't be threatened. It is. God is. And anything else that seemingly contradicts that is simply unreal. So it, it has no true existence. It seems to exist in your mind, it seems to have some kind of reality because you're thinking thoughts, you're feeling feelings. We project that out. We then create a whole lot of situations, people, places, events that seem. To, to, to make this, this thought system of fear exist. And yet, the thoughts themselves, from which all of this arises, are unreal. So they have no true existence. True existence is permanent, is beingness. And what you'll observe with any negative thought or emotion, 
unfortunately, is that they are not permanent. Thank God for that. If, if fear was true, then you'd be in fear permanently. There would be no escape. But it comes and goes. Fear in all of its forms comes and goes. It shifts and it changes. That alone is proof that it's unreal. What is real simply is, cannot be threatened, can be obscured. Just like, to use that um, analogy I used in the meditation, like clouds. Clouds can seemingly obscure the sky and the sun for a while, it's not permanent, but the cloud patterns will change. They'll shift, they'll change. And sooner or later, the sun and the sky will be revealed again because they are eternal. They are the, the underlying true eternal reality. From your limited perspective, as a human being standing on earth, if you don't understand the truth, you may on a cloudy day go, oh, you know, there's no sun. Sun's disappeared, no sky, no sun, it's clouds. But that doesn't last, it never lasts. In the same way, this entire world, this entire universe, just like a cloud, it's drifting by, it's coming and it's going. It kind of, it can't really obscure the sky, which is your awareness, your true awareness, which is your natural inheritance. And the sun, which is the source of that awareness. Call that God, source, creator, whatever, life force essence. Can't really obscure any of it. And it's simply realizing that, and you see that so clearly. None of these thoughts really matter. None of these thoughts and emotions about what is unreal really exist. Then you're starting to wake up from the dream. Then you're starting to find the peace that this final sentence points to. Herein lies the peace of God. Peace of God that passes all, un passes all understanding. Quote from the Bible. Because it's not the understanding of the world. Your own understanding. What you think you know as a human being. What you've been taught up to this point, all of that has, has, has to be undone. All of your education was simply an education in how to make illusions real, how to make the ego real, how to make fear and everything that's opposite to love real. That all has to be undone. So this is the process of undoing or unlearning what you've learned. So that you can find this peace. Because we all want, we all want peace. So your heart's deepest desire, just I just want peace. I want to be peaceful. I want to be happy. I want to be free of all the, the negativity, all the thoughts and the emotions and the apparent ups and downs and the vicissitudes of this world and the, everything that disturbs your peace of mind here. The only way you're going to find that peace is within. You can't change the world to bring you peace. The world is as it is. The world has always been chaotic. The world has always been a place that disturbs your peace. The more attached you get to the world, the more it disturbs your peace. So the only answer is to change the way you perceive it and to acknowledge that you have a perceptual problem I was listening to David Hofmeister, who's one of the leading teachers of the Course in Miracles recently, and he did a whole talk on just this one idea. Right? You have to accept right here and now that you have a perceptual problem. All of your problems are not problems of fact, they are problems of perception. And if you can really say, I have a perceptual problem because I'm perceiving. What is unreal is real. That's my perceptual problem. And that is, that is very deep secret. Like when I perceive anything in this world and I go, now my mind's starting to create a story about it, to dwell on the thoughts, dwell on the emotions it seems to generate. I have a perceptual problem. I'm perceiving what is unreal is real. And I'm inverting the truth in that process. I'm now obscuring the truth to myself. I'm making what is unreal real. 
And that now becomes my reality. And I've forgotten that there's this pure, formless awareness, love, presence. I just obscure it. I forget it. And my mind becomes preoccupied with all of these false thoughts, false beliefs, false emotions that are, that are unreal and they simply don't exist. But as long as I want to make them exist, I will. I'll continue thinking those thoughts. I'll continue feeling the feelings. I'll continue generating dramas in my life to justify those thoughts and emotions until I stop it, until I'm saying, I only want the peace of God. And I'm willing to acknowledge that my way up to this point has not worked. I've tried in many, many ways, many different ways to find peace and to find happiness. And I've failed miserably because the ego cannot. You try within a thought system that is designed to disturb your peace. It's designed to create misery and suffering. There's no way you're going to succeed within that thought system. The thought system brings its own results. You believe in separation. You believe in fear. You believe in anger, hatred, and attack. It all goes as one package. And you can't sort of make that a better package. Go, well, I'll just kind of upgrade my, my untrue belief system to, to make it somehow functional. This is what many, many teachings do. Many uh, so-called spiritual teachings, there's a whole personal growth industry. It's okay, well, you know, you don't have to really change your mind, fundamentally change your mind. Just upgrade yourself, improve yourself. You know, change this here, tweak that here. And this is not a pro the approach of the Course in Miracles. It's, it's a fundamental change in mind that is required. Fundamental shift in your understanding of, of reality, of who you think you are, what, what, what you, who, you, who you think you are, what you think is real. Fundamentally, that has to change. So that you turn this upside down thought system of the ego the right way up. Instead of seeing what is unreal, what is false, is true, and what is true as false or non-existent, it's obscure. So no, what is unreal, what is false, is false. And it always has been false, it always will be false, and I'm never, I'm just not going to believe in it, in any of its effects, any, any, not, none of that is true. And when you can do that, then you can honor only what is true. Then you can find this peace that passes all understanding. Because if only love is true, if only love is real, then there is no reason to fear. There is nothing to fear. Your entire experience in this world is a hallucination. Why would you fear a hallucination? Why would you fear a dream? There's no point, there's no purpose to that. It only disturbs your peace. It only obscures your natural inheritance. So this course is designed to train you to systematically, fundamentally change your mind about who you are, about the world. And nothing else is going to work. Um, you may think there's still other, another way, but there is no other way. I've, I've, many people have tried. I've tried. You can't compromise. You can't make make illusions true and then still find peace and happiness. As soon as you make illusions true, you will find your peace is disturbed and your awareness of love's presence is blocked. So what I like about the Course is that it's very, very clear. It's very unequivocal, very unambiguous. It's very clear, very simple teaching because of that. Not easy to do because we're caught up in our own illusions. We're so wound into the dream world that it's going to take a lot of undoing, a lot of unprogramming of our minds. But so be it. Okay, well, that's the process. If we've screwed ourselves in so tightly into this false thought system and now we're suffering as a result of it. We're going to just go, okay, well, same way I screwed myself in, thought by thought, emotion by emotion, I can undo it. As these thoughts and emotions arise, I let them go. And then I start unscrewing myself. And 
with every turn of the screw, I'm coming out of it. I'm, I'm, I'm not screwed into time and space anymore. I'm, and I'm not screwed up. Because what screws you up is being screwed in, jacked into time and space. It's coming out of all of that. I want to unscrew myself, release all the, all the internal you know, knots and come into an experience of peace that then stays with you in whatever you're doing. So you never lose that peace, even in your, even in your daily life. You can, uh, you can operate in that peace, that peace when it, it manifests in action is I call flow, the state of flow, of course, of course called the miracles. And you remain rooted in that peace no matter what. When you're in a state of flow and you get guided. We mentioned earlier, James, about you know, just saying, well, I can't do it my way. And just getting quiet and listening and taking the guidance from, um, from the Holy Spirit. So if you can all do that today and say, I don't know, I can't do this. On, on your own, your, your own way is not going to work. You're not going to find the peace of God that way. You have to submit. You have to surrender those ideas, those thoughts, beliefs, wanting to do it your own way and say, okay, you know, I'm in your hands. Spirit, Jesus, you don't have to talk about Jesus. This is a universal presence, a spirit coming through in these worlds. It's saying, listen to me, because I know the way. I'll show you the way. I'm the voice for God. I've never gone away. I've just been obscured. You haven't listened to me for so many years, maybe lifetimes. But now's your chance. I'm still here. I haven't gone away. And so I will guide you. Just be willing to listen. And I will, I will show you how to find peace and happiness and flow in your daily life as you unscrew yourself from this world. And so you can live a very happy life while you're here. You will, you, you just, you've still got a journey to undertake. And you can live in a, in a, in a happy dream while you're here, uh, knowing that you know, you're unwinding yourself, that ultimately this is the last dream. You're not going to come back and dream another dream, have another lifetime. This is your way out. This is your way home. And you can experience happiness and peace and joy while you're doing it. And that's pretty much the best you can do you know, with this life in this world. You can experience happiness, peace, joy consistently while you're unwinding your mind and you're know, turning your mind to, to its source, to an awareness of its natural inheritance. Um, that's, that's a pretty good life. That's an enlightened life. That's a happy dream, as the Course calls it. So any questions? Any questions about this? Introduction. Anything you want to know about the, the Course in Miracles? The Art of Letting Go Course? No? Oh, Jonathan, I'd be interested if you could send me the link to that talk by David Hofmeister uh, that you listened to. Okay. About this I'll, um, yeah, I'll try and find it. Um, if you Google David Hofmeister or go on YouTube and say David Hofmeister perceptual problem. You'll find it. Okay. You should find it. Um, but I'll, I'll see if I can. I'll see if I because I'll just go and search. Uh, you should, it's, it's out there. So okay. about a 45 minute talk where he's talking about, you have to do one thing on this journey to start. It says you have to recognize that you have a perceptual problem. That it, all your problems are perceptual. The problems are not out there. We all think, oh, you know, I've got this problem and this problem to solve and this problem. But, but actually your entire problem is a perceptual problem. How are you perceiving all of these problems. And if you keep perceiving them as real, then you, there's no way out because the problems will keep coming. As uh, you're probably aware of in, in this world, problems just keep coming. 
the only solution is to change your perception of it. Okay, I'm willing to see this differently. Therefore, I'm willing to submit, to surrender to this guidance from a master, so someone who's done this, he's, he's walked this path. He was human, uh, he transcended the human condition entirely, he's done it, found his way out. Okay, you know, I need some guidance from someone who's done it, not someone who's still screwed into time and space trying to find their own way out. Uh, let me listen, let me surrender and listen to these teachings and apply them. And they work because the truth works under the guidance of the master. If you apply these teachings, if you practice the lessons in the way he suggests, or you simply do them, you don't judge them, you don't resist them, you simply do the lesson that, I, that I'm going to send you. I'm going to start the workbook um, in a week's time. Uh, so you know, this first week is just an introduction to kind of ease you in. We'll be uh, meditating the text every day um, and discussing the text and then kind of easing into the workbook in, in, uh, in lesson two. Yeah, so week one is really some of the theory. I've given you an over, overview of that, but we'll dive into it in the, in the days to come. Um, and uh, you know that those, those sessions are gonna happen um, primarily in the evenings. We'll take a deeper dive into some of the theory and have a bit longer. The afternoon sessions typically be shorter, just a meditation, quick expression session, and time for some discussion. If you've got any questions, so those will might be half an hour to forty minutes, and then the evening session will tend to be longer as we'll dive into into some of the theory. Those will be an an hour, possibly possibly longer. I was going to say, uh, on the lead up to finding about the course, they kept having things happen. And the one day I thought, I think I'm, I think this is a lesson I'm supposed to be learning. You know, um, why does this keep happening? This really is a lesson. And that was my search for, you know, um, change paths. And, uh, and that's how eventually I found out about the course. Mm. Plan, so you, you Googled, Jesus, please help me. <laughs> I, I did, yeah. <laughs> and then showed up, of course, in miracles. But, yeah. <laughs> which just shows you, you know, ask and you receive. Just put it, yeah. put it out there, and um, the answer comes back. Because uh, what's amazing about this part is that we have the teachings of a, you know, this this is possibly the the greatest enlightened master of all time, and we have his teachings written down, you know, word by word in a very diligent way. You have uh, a whole course that he's designed to help you to do this. So you're much more fortunate today than say the disciples, even his inner circle 2000 years ago were because they didn't have this. They were relying on his verbal teaching. And, and when he left, there was no course to like, okay, you know, here's, here's exactly my teachings, follow this. It's taken 2,000 years of time, although there is no time ultimately. 2,000 years for this to come into manifestation, into a form that makes it universally accessible to anyone uh, who can read um, and has an internet connection because this is open source. It's freely available. There's no copyright on it. Um, so we're very fortunate to live in this time, so to have access to this material, to be able to, to study it, freely and um, to be able to use technology like this to connect and to share because uh, it's not the easiest teaching to work through on your own. I've done it certainly, but I probably would have made more progress quicker if I'd done it in a, in a guided facilitated way is why I've created this course. So that as things are coming up, as things are arising, you've got, an opportunity to share them, to ask questions, and also just to help you to practice this properly. So the process is designed to facilitate you practicing this regularly, properly. You're doing the workbook lessons so that you get the experience. If you do the work, you do the lessons, well, then experiences come. If you don't do that, you don't spend time doing these spiritual practices Jesus recommends, then you're not going to get any benefits. So it sort of stands to reason. 
you know, so what you, whatever you put into this course, know that you'll get that out many, many times, multiply. The more you put in, uh, the more you'll get out in terms of your own experience of truth, your own and your own peace of mind. That uh, you know, these are these are not insubstantial gifts. That's what we all want. And in six weeks, you can go a long way towards making that your reality. You know, I'm always in the peace. God, if I slip out of it, I very quickly come back to it. I stay in peace. I stay rooted in that no matter what. That's the fundamental purpose of the art of letting go course is to bring you into the state where you can be peaceful, you can be happy, you can flow with life, drop all that negativity and uh, live your life the way it was meant to be lived. Okay, so I think um, we've been going for just over two hours. So unless there's any questions, maybe it's a good uh, opportunity just to, to end it. Anyone else want to share anything? Any questions, comments, anything you're not sure about? No? Okay, as they say in Latin, you is silent consent. So I'm gonna take that as consent to, uh, to end the session here. Thank you for joining to, today. Um, I hope that was interesting, useful, valuable, and um, helped you find more peace already. So let's just close it up with a little uh, short five minute meditation. It was a nice way to end the session, start with the meditation, end with the meditation. So uh, I'm going to mute everyone, just close your eyes. Sitting comfortably. Sitting on a chair, feet shoulder width apart, up your hands on your lap. Keep your back straight. And just again connect with the breath. So breathing in through the nose, notice how the stomach rises, chest rises, subtle flow of air in through the nostrils. Make this one a maximal inhale breath. So filling your lungs completely. Imagine that as you breathe in, you're not just breathing air in, but you're breathing very essence of love and gratitude. Feel that love flowing into your heart center, this eternal loving presence that is beyond what can be taught, but you can experience it. Have a sense of breathing that into your heart. Spend it one hand on your heart center. That helps you just to connect in with your heart, pray, heart presence. Feel love infusing every pore, every cell, every muscle of your body, every part of your mind. Smile. Take another sip of air and just a maximum inhale breath. All the breath in. And I'll just experience gratitude. Be grateful for this love. Always there. It's waiting, waiting for you to let it in. Start removing all the blocks that you've placed to its awareness. Be grateful for the session. The mighty companions who joined us today for this process, the art of letting go course that we've begun all the insights, the understanding, the wisdom, the connection, the love that you can experience over the next six weeks. So it is said and so it is done. Now exhale out through your mouth. And have a sense of extending this love and gratitude to everyone you know, 
so your family, friends, acquaintances, people in your network. If anyone specific comes to mind, just have a sense of giving them the love, giving them the peace to experience in life, and extending it out. And don't stop at who you know, extend it out to everyone. It's the entire human race. And all life on this planet, all beings, is a Buddhist prayer, the meta prayer that says, may all beings be happy. May all beings be peaceful. May all beings experience love. So have a sense of that as you radiate the love and the, the peace, the happiness outwards. The best way to experience these yourself is to give them, to give them to receive our one in truth, as they quote. The course lesson I sent out earlier today. So just give it freely and generously. And then you will have the love, the peace, the joy, the gratitude as your own. So just notice this expanded state you're in. Notice the loving feeling in your heart, peaceful presence in your mind, the gratitude, smile. And just anchor the state in for the rest of the uh, afternoon and evening. Just stay here. Uh, you don't need to move away from this. Just stay connected. Set that intention. So it is said, so it is done. I want to carry this with you the rest of the evening, the rest of the afternoon. Evening. If anything arises to seemingly disturb us, then it takes a moment, you pause, you breathe, do a miniature version of this little meditation. You connect with your breath, you connect with your heart space, put your hand on hand in your heart. Feel the peace, feel the love. And in that peace and love, no negativity can remain. So as you exhale, you just imagine you're blowing it away like a, a dark cloud. There's no power to obscure the eternal sun sky that you want. Stay rooted in that awareness. Use your breath to help you. And I wish you a very peaceful, loving, and flowing afternoon evening ahead. Thanks for joining the session and Namaste. It means the divine love and peace and joy and me, knowledge and honor that same love, peace and joy in you. All right, everyone, thank you for joining the session. And uh, I look forward to uh, seeing you tomorrow.